Um, I'm going to be uh, talking uh, a little bit about uh, research trials and things that you should kind of consider as you're looking at data and things like that. And then Dr. Um, uh, Heather Kelly is going to come up and talk on uh, target spot in cotton. So with that, we'll get started. Um, again, my name is Bruce Kirksey. I'm the director of research at Agri Center uh, International in Memphis. It's about 10 or 15 minutes from here. We have roughly a thousand acres uh, on our property and about 550 acres of it is in some kind of crop, whether it's research or just production. Uh, we tend to do the research first and whatever ground we have left over, we put in production. So um, we usually conduct a little over 100 experiments a year and it's uh, herbicide, insecticide, fungicide work, uh, irrigation equipment, uh, just a, a lot of different kinds of experiments and on a wide range of crops. So we mainly um, work in corn, cotton, and soybeans, but we do wheat and grain sorghum, sweet sorghum, um, and, and a lot of other minor crops as well. Um, our mission at the Agri Center is to focus on ag research and education. So that's our, that's our mission. So um, most of the things that we do there is driven by agricultural research and then taking that information um, and using that for education. We have an education uh, department, I guess you would call it, and we run about 6,000 kids a year through the Agri Center teaching them about agriculture and uh, we have a solar farm and a foresty, forest area and we teach them about those kind of things as well. But last year we had um, uh, a little over 350 acres in, in research plots. Um, and it came up to around 17,000 individual plots if you added them all up. But I'm not going to do that again because it takes too long to add all that up. Um, and we did work for a little over 30 companies last year. So this is, um, this is just going to be, for, an, for example, um, we have lots of crops out there with different kinds of technologies. For example, uh, there's over 30 different cotton varieties that you can choose from this year. And within those varieties, you have uh, conventional varieties, you got different herbicide technologies and insecticide technologies uh, and, and other traits as well. But what I wanted to, to focus on is, is how we can, as researchers, uh, conduct those trials with all those different traits, uh, herbicide or insecticide trait, how we can manage those so that we get the best data that we can possibly get and uh, ultimately get that out to the grower. And uh, I've got some examples on how, we're, how we do some things, and then I've got a little basic um, statistical table that um, I'm just gonna go over real briefly. So as you're looking at data this, this winter and making decisions, you can look at the statistics table, the analysis of variance, and you can kinda uh, be able to tell a little bit more about the experiment other than looking at the, the yield numbers. So most of our research plots, and this is true with uh, university plots or if it's contract research uh, trials, but they're, they're basically set up like this. This, for example, is just a 10 treatment test. So um, usually the plots are two or four or six rows wide, it, it varies, but it's usually at least two, uh, especially if you're gonna yield it. And they can be between 30 and 50 feet long. And uh, that can vary as well. And uh, typically you have four replications. Um, some trials uh, that we get require more and, and sometimes we, we just use uh, three reps uh, because, because you can't run statistics on two reps. So um, we do usually at least three. So this is a basic setup here. So this would be treatments one through 10, and then this is the second replication of those 10 treatments. And they are randomized within this range. So for example, this is treatment one. It may be treatment one is in 205 right here and 302 and 409. They're all randomized. And, and everybody has a computer program that they use to, to, to 
to an analyze the data and it generates these randomizations. I tend to look at the randomizations because um, you know it's random so there's a chance that all of treatment ones could be right here in a row. And I don't know if I've ever seen that but there's a chance that that could happen. So I usually look at that just to make sure that all of my treatment ones aren't you know on one side of the field. So and this is this is just explaining all the different uh, randomizations in there. It actually took a while to color all those things in like that but uh, for example this yellow one here you can see it it occurs in each rep. So if we have a test like this um, this came out to be 0.67 acres and that doesn't mean anything right now but it, it, it will in just a second. So a lot of the time a lot of times uh, what we do is we include borders in our trial and what that does is it helps um, to minimize effects that you might have on these outside rows here. So if you have a two row plot then you're more than likely going to be harvesting two rows because most of the um, mechanically harvesting is uh, at least two rows uh, harvester. So what we do we end up putting in a border on each side and it could be also be on the front and the back side of the plots as well. But what, what that does is, is it just kind of creates a, a little buffer of area where if something was to happen over here, it's not good. it possibly would not affect what you're doing in your, in your trial. So just by adding um, these uh, four row buffers on each side, it increased it to 0.8 acres. Now, with a lot of the new technologies and stuff and um, the chance for drift, all herbicides will drift, but some will drift more than others. Um, what, what we'll probably will start doing this year is putting in a taller crop for a border in addition to the, the buffer. Like here is our buffer of the same crop. So if this is cotton, then this is cotton. We're probably going to put in a taller crop like co uh, corn or, or something that's taller than, than what the, we're actually experimenting on. That way, if we have something going on over here and it's a little bit windy or something like that, it, it won't drift onto our test plot. So um, doing that, it'll, it'll increase it to almost one acre in total size. But it does give us a little bit more assurance uh, that we're not going to get any drip from a, a, an adjacent trial. A lot of the trials that we do are considered regulated. They're not commercially available yet. They're uh, uh, still under USDA and uh, evaluation. And in addition to the, the border plots around, they require another border around it. And sometimes it's, it's a fallow border, and sometimes it just has to be uh, 40 feet of, uh, of a same crop. So. If this was a regulated cotton trial, then this would all be um, cotton, but it doesn't have to be like a regulated. It could be a commercial variety, but the whole, the whole test plot would be considered regulated. So just by adding that border there, that, that increased it to 1.6 acres. So that's, that's an acre and a half for one trial. So um, what we can do, uh, like at the AgriCenter, we tend to group trials of similar whatever we're trying to test together so uh, we can't always do that but we at least try to especially if we if we know what trials we're going to be doing early enough in the season we can map those out and uh, you know in Excel and, and arrange trials so that they're all be together for example if if we're going to have a lot of um, uh, enlist cotton then we might try to put all of our enlist cotton trials together that way uh, you know, the dicamba is all in one spot and then we can have borders around everything. And uh, it, it'll eventually make the data better because you're cutting out a lot of other stuff that could happen. And it, not only uh, drift, but um, we would we'd be looking at um, variabilities in the soil, uh, low spots and things like that. So we have several fields out at the Agri Center that we kind of work around because there's several low spots 
and we try to put Tim in those acres over there. So, so with all that said, I want to give you just a little bit of an example. Um, this is a four treatment test, uh, four reps, two rows wide, and then we have a four row board around it. This is pretty. This will be a pretty common example of, of a research trial. So this is the, the trial that we're going to be talking about. And this is our, our border. This black area is just a dirt road. And then we have another research trial over here to the right of that. So let me back up one. I want you to pay particular interest to this area right in here. So it's, um, it would actually be the third treatment, which is treatment C in this example. I should have made it three, but it's treatment C. But 103, 204, 303, and 401 are all the same treatment, just randomized. And this is an example of the uh, uh, ANOVA table I was telling you about. So to set this up, these are your treatments. This is yield in pounds per plot. So this is after we harvest it. This is just raw data, basically, uh, in this column. And then we converted it to pounds per acre. So when you run an analysis on any type of data, you're going to get a whole lot of information, a lot more than what's up here. I just picked these three out because these three are the first things that you should probably look at in any trial when you're um, after you've analyzed it. So I'm going to start off with this is LSD. So let's look at this column here. This is pounds of seed cotton per acre. So we have an LSD value of 312. So LSD is what, what we use to compare two treatment. So if we wanted to compare treatment A with treatment B, we would subtract these two numbers from each other. Okay, And if that value is greater than 312, then it's considered statistically different. If it's less than 312, then they're considered to be the same. Um, so a lot of times uh, LSD, they'll include letters out to the side. So any letter that's the same are considered statistically equivalent. So in this example, uh, treatment C out yielded treatment A, it out yielded treatment B, it out yielded treatment D. So it was statistically, it yielded statistically higher than any of the other three treatments. Um, I'm going to move on and explain those. Uh, the LSD, I, I think I explained that all right. The standard deviation is just uh, another measure of how a particular data point compares to the overall mean. So. Uh, the larger the number, it means the data is spread out more. Uh, smaller the number, it, it, it's pretty close to the general mean. The CV, uh, coefficient of variation, um, this is a good thing to look at too because the higher the CV is for that particular experiment, the less reliable or the less confident you are in that data. So, um, but that also depends on what kind of trial it is too. So um, if we go back and look at this, the CB on these, this trial was 9.03, which I would consider that pretty good. Um, I've seen some that are, you know, three and four, and I've got some that, that do 30 and 40 every year. So, um, but that tends to be more due to the type of experiment versus the data that's in the experiment. So. Uh, we're going to look at that same data set and then we, let's just uh, say we've got some wind that's blowing in this direction here. That's why I wanted you to look at these two treatments here. So we go in there and we harvested those treatments and because of that wind going through there and drifted something on it, our yield data has gone down. So um, whereas before this treatment was significantly different than the rest of them. Now they're all considered the same. Um, you can look at this data and say, well, this one yielded more than, than any of the other three treatments, which is true. But if you run the statistics on it, 
it could also mean that any of these other treatments could be that same value at any other time. So uh, based on this, um, there was no significant difference in any of the treatment. So that's why uh, I wanted to show you that. And that's why uh, we as researchers that, uh, need to make sure we do a really good job to get that data out there that, that we're confident about. The data that I do for other companies, they take that data and they um, usually combine it with uh, other locations and it goes into an overall data package. So the, the better the job that we can do on a single site location, the, you know, the better it's going to help uh, that company in the decision making process. So, so look at that data very closely. You don't have to be a statistician to when you're looking at that. Just if you just look at those two or three points that I was telling you about, you can figure out whether or not that the the experiment was a good experiment or just a medium experiment. So, and ask questions about the data that that you're seeing. So, um, with that, um, are there any questions? If you want to, we can hold a question until after the end and um, go that route. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Kelly.